Hi and welcome to my playhouse. Today I'm just gonna finish a project that I started way back and we really never ended this very well. I was um, transferring from one server to another server because I went on eBay and I bought some new processors. These are the Intel Xeon 5680s. Yeah, I got two of those and I installed them in number 17 down here. And that meant that I was gonna move everything from number 15. I'm missing number 16. Oh, no, it's up there. Uh, what a mess, okay. <laughs> But I never, I moved most of my virtual machines, but I have left one because I wanted to make a speed test comparing the two machines. If, uh, what would a virtual machine uh, have of processing resources in number 15 compared to the new one, number 17, how much improvement would this give me? So I wanted to uh, try that and move the last machine so I can shut down number 15 and have it on a standby instead of always being on as it is right now so we're gonna be doing that but while we are at it um, I kind of need your help a little bit because I don't play computers uh, YouTube is my game <laughs> I play YouTube the like button is down here and well IT guys like us we don't use the like button as much as everybody else does that means that my videos get left behind when 14 year old girls they like everything then you're presented with the things they like instead of you liking some of my videos if you don't like this you don't have to like this but please remember that IT guys if you want to see more IT stuff remember to like the videos that's how Google and YouTube finds out that this video is worthy of pushing to someone else if you like a video please remember to like it that's how that works it's really weird and random we're gonna be moving that virtual machine I'm gonna go into the computer and we're gonna have a look at that oh yeah and in the living room I'm preparing for next weekend's video um, plus this project of unsoldering the socket in a motherboard uh, can continue because the new socket has arrived from China actually got two of those and some soldering tin liquid stuff so well i have to get around making that video as well okay i'm gonna do this really simple sorry for recording the screen i haven't installed the screen capturing software yet this machine is running server 2012 uh, it's giving me a little bit of a problem i have my old machine here it's a windows 7 pro 64 bit and my initials and that's the machine that I, I use it as my jump server slash machine. I have had a lot of requests of showing you guys how this works in VMware. I'm sure a lot of people already use VMware and maybe some of you would like to. That's why they want to see more of it. And this is a server or slash. It's a virtual machine that has already been built. I have installed it and I've used it for a while. Um, I can see some summary of this virtual machine. I have given it four cores, virtual cores, V cores. I have given it four gigabytes of RAM. It has an IP number. It's running VMware tools. They are okay. It has a name down here. It has it's powered on, sure, and it's uh, on that host, and blah blah blah. Uh, it's, it doesn't have high availability. Right now it's over here, it's consuming just about one gigahertz of uh, CPU speed. It does have four of those, um, so it's not consuming very much really. It's consuming all the RAM it has available, although only 640 megabytes is active. The rest of it is just snatched up, it says this is mine and it has some hard drives and it's using some of that it can see some of the it has two drives it can see the, the data store locally on this server that it's on and it can see one of my iSCSI drives and it has a network card and this is for it has access to the my general network that's the only server that is left on this uh, host 
here. This is the host. It has uh, two CPUs and they are the X5650s. And we're gonna move it down on the new server. That one has a couple of processors that are a bit faster. They are 3.33 gigahertz and the other ones were 2.666 gigahertz. So slight improvement, but before we do that, I wanna do a speed test of it. Make sure that what did we come from and what will we uh, see when we move it over at the new server. That's kind of what is gonna be interesting. And in VMware, when you have this machine, you can press this button up here, which is uh, launch virtual machine console. That's like looking at the screen of the virtual machine. So that will pop up here. And I have been using this machine last to upload some of my videos to the Chinese uh, copy of YouTube because I want to be a YouTuber in China as well. I believe this. So we're gonna run a speed test. I'm not sure, I don't think I have it installed on this machine. So I'll do that and be right back. I have now installed the test program. Um, I think it might have already been installed before because it was complaining about me using the evaluation version. So, well, we're not gonna care about that. We're just gonna run the CPU test and it's really, it's the CPU test that I'm interested in. We're just gonna run the, all the CPU stuff and keep in mind this uh, machine which is a virtual machine is only it has four virtual CPUs available so this is what the virtual machine sees it's not how much the server actually has become faster it's how much faster does this virtual machine becomes when it's being moved to another piece of metal with a better CPU or faster at least there we are 4104, that's about the same as my PC here at my desktop, the new Lenovo one. It's about as fast as that, but there is more cores available. 4100, that's probably close enough. I'll just turn this off. And now I wanna move this machine down to this server. So I right click it and I choose migrate. Um, these features are only available if you are running VMware with vCenter and that's where VMware starts to make their money so this this is not free anymore if you want it to be free you would shut down the server and you would just copy the files over and you will turn it on again with the very expensive vCenter you have some other choices and that is to do Right now I haven't turned off the server. So right now I can change the host or I can change the data store. If I turn it off, I can, um, I can move both of them and it will just pop up over there. Let's just change the host first. There, we'll mark the new host down here. It will complain about the file access on that. We are not able to do that. I don't know, even know why it suggested me to do that, but well, it's not able to. So we will start by migrating the disk storage, which we will change the disk store and we have to change it to something that both hosts can see. And that would be that one. I kind of just know that. It's an iSCSI store on one of my iSCSI boxes. So we'll move the contents of the server over to this storage unit while it's running. And we will move it further on from there. So next, it will probably be good. And down here, it will be copying that. And this goes very fast at the very start. And then it slows down considerably. We will be back a little later. It really didn't take that long. It took about 14 minutes to copy that over the storage thing. So now I should be able to, I've just moved it over to some common storage. So now I can take the machine and I can migrate it again. And this time I can change the host. I should be able to select the new host down here. And now it's just complaining. It will not be able to reach this CD-ROM that is in the drive. We don't care about that. So we'll just ignore that. Press next. Validation successful, we, meaning that it can actually do that. And I'm gonna select that it will be in my active servers. Next, I can choose how fast I want this to go. Well, we are busy. Hi. And next and it will move over there. That won't take long. 40, 41, 42. 
Right now it's more or less just moving over the memory uh, from one server to another server so that this server... Remember it's running, it hasn't been shut down, this could be... This machine could be doing whatever, it's not doing anything. It's absolutely not doing anything, 26 megahertz it's using. So it's just sitting there, but we could have it running a test. I should have done that, that would have been fun. But I didn't. So now it's almost done, 72%. <laughs> Last little bit was quick. So now it's over here and it's actually now it's complaining that the VMware tools is out of date. So probably this version of VMware is newer than what version was this anyway? This, okay, it came from a 5.5 and it's now over on a 6.00. So now it's on the new machine, but it's still using the, the common uh, file area, which I really don't want it to. So I will migrate it once again and tell it to change data store, change data store. And now I wanna put it on some of the good SSDs that I have over here. And this being one of the machines that I use a lot, I'm gonna be putting it on those. I have about 200 gigabytes of capacity and I will probably use up half of the free space, which is about 100 gigs. Um, we'll do this right now. I might move it away later, but Right now, that's good. So it's gonna be moving the files once again. I could have done this in, in one go if I turned off the machine. Well, I thought it would be fun to move this while it was running. Okay, the machine is done uh, copying the files from one data store to another data store. So now it should be on my good SSD storage. So let's um, have another look at the machine. It's still on. It might not have noticed that it has changed processors. No, nope. it still thinks that it's on X5650s. So just for the giggles of it, we're gonna reboot it and see it change. So we'll restart it. Okay, now it's booted and now it sees the right processors. X5680s, 3.33 gigahertz. So let's try running the test again. It's right there and it's gathering system information just in a little bit we can run the test ready to run the test all CPU you'll you'll get the results the results are in and now it hits 5126 remember this is with only four cores so I have an improvement of about 1000 which is awesome for putting in a new CPU. That's a 20% increase. Is it a 25? Well, it might be a 25% increase actually. So that's awesome. I was just thinking about something else that we should try. So, and we will shut it down. And I wanted to try and give this machine all 24 cores in the server and just run the test with that and see how that works out. I will just wait for the, oh, it's already down. So we'll edit settings here. And instead of four cores, We'll just go down here and we'll take two and we will give it all 24 cores. I think we need to give it just a, a tad more memory. We'll give it 16 gigabytes of memory and we'll power it back on. And we'll try and run the test with that. Okay, it's back up again. Here is 24 cores. Let's shut that down and run the test again. Well, that wasn't that awesome. 9,116. Oh, that could have done a lot better. I think something else is teasing in. I think it might not be as good with the hyperthreading. Mm, that did not give me the results I was hoping for. Okay, apparently hyperthreading is not very awesome when you're doing this test because I cut this server down to just 12 cores and now it's actually performing better in the test. So right now it's, it's only using the physical cores or at least it has the option of using the physical cores and it increased in performance up to something that is a lot closer uh, to where it should be. So the two CN processors, they're just under what one of these 
i7 5820s can perform. So for, for a gaming PC, you would probably go for that one. It's probably also overclockable, so this is not for gaming. We can just see the PC here, in its settings. It now has 12 cores, still 16 gigs of RAM. I have to remember to um, decrease that again. Well, this shows really clearly that the top frequency has a lot to say, a lot to do with uh, your performance when you have a server like this because I want about 25% going up in clock speed but adding a lot of cores um, I didn't get as much if I didn't use the hyperthreading I got close to where I wanted to be as soon as I added the hyperthreading um, it got um, it couldn't really figure out if it was supposed to be using a real core or send it to the hyperthreading core or how to do that so as soon as I went down in the number of cores so that it could send the jobs to the real processor and didn't have to actually send the job to the hyperthreading processor core as well it meant that it, it didn't have to do that shifting all the time which is apparently time consuming as well so well I got two new processors for the server and I won about 25% that's what my virtual machine sees that virtual machine will have 25% more processing power these were some bloody expensive processors back in the day now they're cheaper I think I paid I paid about $250 for those two processors which I thought was a good price they will probably keep dropping so if you're on a lookout for new processors I'll try and link some in in the description below see if that's anything that comes to your liking so um, but thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and remember to give me that like and join me over at Google Plus they ran that way where I occasionally post a picture of what I'm up to have a really nice day bye bye